Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I have a little problem that I've been dealing with in my pond. I always do visual checkups to make sure that my turtles are doing okay. And I noticed something on the bottom, on the plastron of some of my adult females, particularly Miss Dragonfruit. So today I'm gonna check my water quality and make sure that it is ideal because usually issues on the plastron are from bad water quality. So today I bought a test kit and we're gonna check the water quality and see what's going on. But before we get started, just hold on, hold on. This isn't Patreon plug. We're gonna get to that after this. Before we do today's video though, I have a really fun collaboration video coming up and I need you guys to send me videos and pictures of your turtle enclosures. If you want them to be featured, potentially featured on the channel and for me to react to them and rate them or whatever. So if you guys want me to react to your setups, hit the, the link. No, send an email to Dan the Guppy Man, the Guppy Man because I wasn't the turtle man back then. Dan and the guppy man at gmail.com. Send me a picture or a video of your enclosure. The best way to do that is probably to just upload it to Google Drive and then send me the link. But otherwise you can DM me also on Instagram maybe. It'd be way easier if you just email me, but you can also Instagram DM me. I can probably just get the stuff there. But yes, pictures and videos of your enclosures I would like to see. And if you don't mind, I will react to them on the channel for an upcoming video. So make sure that you guys do that, please, because then I will have content. Otherwise, I'm stuck floating in the water with nothing. Thank you. Anyway, now time for the Patreon plug. Now, while I feed the fish and the turtles to keep y'all entertained and myself, I suppose. I, look at them going crazy. Guys, relax. Did I feed them yesterday? I don't remember. Anyway, before we get started with today's video, make sure that you guys hit the link and consider heading right up over here and checking out my Patreon. On that website, you can directly support support me and the channel and everything that I have going on here because I have some really big plans for a lot of these animals. And my patrons get first early access to videos, a day early, discounts on merch. You get direct access to talking to me if you have questions and also turtles when I have them available. And I will be having some soon, probably like next week actually. So consider checking that out. Also, I have merch and if you hit the link up over here, you can check that out as well. So anyway, with all that fun stuff out of the way and with all of these terrapins fed, Let's get started with testing the water. All right, Turt Nerd, so this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Excuse the wind, I don't control the weather, sadly. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while now. I wanna test my water quality. Listen, you should test your water quality. You should have one of these test kits so you know exactly where your water parameters are at because terrapins are very, very, I mean, terrapins in particular, but all turtles are sensitive to water quality changes. So I got this API. Test master, fresh water master, whatever test kit so I can test everything so I know exactly what's in that water. And let me show you why. Right here is a picture of dragon fruit shell earlier this year. And here we're gonna check on Miss Flipper. You can see she's healing up from where there was some pitting on the underside of her shell. And Miss Bean, when she comes over here, we can also see, actually she's pretty clear. All right, never mind. But dragon fruit is my main concern because she got quite the little indent there, those two spots, and she's got a lot of pitting on her shell, on her underside, compared to when I first got her. Okay, I'm sorry, mama. Basically, that is a form of the early signs of shell rot, which is not Good, no bueno, that's not what we want. Shell rot in terrapins usually begins at the plaster on the underside and it starts as those little pits. Now it'll come and go every once in a while, you know, just naturally, well, not really naturally, but if you don't keep up with your water quality, like that's, that's what happens. So I wanna test and make sure that my water quality is perfect. I've kind of never used one of these before, so this is gonna be really interesting. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna see how this goes. Oh, it says break. Okay, cool. Hello. Oh, caution glass is inside. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Cool, 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 cool. So these are glass. That's kind of weird. Okay, we have this. I need instructions. I have no idea how to do this. I'm going to real quickly, like, teach myself this stuff. And then, I mean, I've done this before, just not with these types of kits. I've done the strips, but I heard that this is more accurate in the way to properly do it. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Okay. I understand now. So basically this tests the pH and then if it's super high and unreadable after that, then you can go to the high range test to see like just exactly where it's at. And then some of these have two bottles. So this is bottle number two for ammonia, bottle number one for ammonia. So each one has different instructions 
solutions. For example, I add eight drops of this into the test tube, then eight drops of ammonia number two, and then like shake it up. Okay, so the main things I'm worried about are ammonia and nitrates, just because the nitrogen cycle basically goes ammonia, bacteria converts it to nitrite, then bacteria converts it to nitrate. Plants eat the nitrates, but the ultimate way to get rid of them is through water changes, which I assume happens when it overfills and when it rains and then it changes out the water. But we're gonna find out if I'm correct or I need to supplement and change the water myself. So let's first check the pH. Got my fancy little test tube. I need to fill it up to the line. Four years and hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt have prepared me for this moment. Okay. Okay, I toured all of it out. I'm a moron. We need to make sure that it's at the meniscus. See, now we're cooking. That's perfect. Okay. Back to my station. For this one, it says that I add three drops, and then after that, it can be tested immediately after mixing it around a little. This is a childproof cap. That's why I can't open it. Three drops anymore, and I'll die. Oh, 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 okay. One, two, three. There we go. Ooh, it's turning blue. Double D double da. Now I need to mix it. This little cap on. I feel like a mad scientist. Now it said inverted a couple times. Let it mix. Now let's check. Here's a little chart to compare it to. All right, guys, what's my pH? I can't see. This is inverted on my camera. Oh, I'm gonna need the high range pH testing, whatchamacallit, because it turned blue, blue, blue. So 7.6. That's kind of interesting. I guess I have high pH. I heard that a stable pH is more important than chasing numbers. So I just kind of did this one for fun. So we're gonna do the high range pH test now. All right, I rinse this out with fresh tap water. Time to go get more. Okay, I'm back. I got it. Nailed it. Right at the meniscus. The meniscus is like that little, because water sticks. Water's literally sticky. I'm falling. So it like curves. See how it curves up the edges? You want to see the lower part of the curve to hit that line. Let's add my drops. High range. Five. Well, this solution is red. And this is red, so I don't quite know what I was expecting. Is red good? It's turning purple. Oh, she purple now. Wait, that's so cool. I like chemistry. I was actually really good at it in high school. Uh, now I'm going to convert to making methamphetamine. Oh, my pH is like 8.4, which makes sense because I am on the coast. So our tap water is very, very basic, meaning acidic is lower than seven, basic is higher than seven, and perfect fresh water is seven. That's very interesting. I'm at a good 8.4, a good 8.4. Uh, here you guys go, check that. On to the next test. I so badly want to drink that. First scoop and I nailed it. All right, so I gotta do bottle number two. One, and then bottle number two. Add eight drops and then eight drops, then shake for 30 seconds, and then leave it for five minutes to develop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next one, open one-handed. Am I an expert? Am I an expert? Yup, I'm an expert. I've been doing this for years. Five, six, I think what we want is this to be clear and there to be nothing. I gotta shake it for 30 seconds. Make sure my instructions are correct. It's 249. You can't see that. It's 249. Nope, that's brightness. It's two. It's two. It's 249. We will wait five minutes. While we wait five minutes for that, I'm gonna do nitrites. This is the second form that ammonia will take in a biological filter. It goes ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. So if I have nitrites, it means my filter is not established, which is weird because it's been running for a year and a half. How many? Add five or five. Cool. That was perfect. And now this one, I have to wait five minutes as well. So what is that? I swear, I have transformers behind these woods. I have to shake this super well and wait five minutes for this also, so I figured I would do this while I wait for the ammonia. Shake it vigorously for five seconds. There we go. I am, this looks so drinkable. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna drink this. Five minutes. I think it's either, I don't know if it's the top one. I, it's definitely not green. I think it just needs a little, it's like right there, the second one, which is no good. You should have zero ammonia in your pond. Let's keep testing. It is so windy. Now for the nitrates. We take bottle number one. We add 10, nine, 
10. And now what do I do? Now we invert this, we'll allow it to mix a little bit. Now I need to take number two, the whole bottle, and vigorously shake it for 30 seconds to ensure accuracy. All right, that's 30, but we're gonna do an extra 10 seconds. It says at least 30. We go above and beyond on this channel, folks. Now it says add 10 drops, and after those 10 drops, I have to shake it vigorously for one minute. No wonder why they say shake it so much. It's a very viscous solution. My camera's dying, great. I'm gonna shake this and pray that it doesn't die immediately. Be right back, hooray! Nitrites, we have zero. Now, so long as we have zero nitrates, then we, if, if I have zero nitrates, I will actually be very surprised. To no one's surprise, I'm stupid. That was yesterday, my camera died, but my ammonia actually is reading at zero. Apparently that's as yellow as that solution gets. And then also, I never showed you guys, but my nitrates also are zero. So my ammonia is zero, the nitrites are zero, and the nitrates are zero. Zero nitrates means, like, what are you doing? What? Oh, why are you in the mini pond, dragon fruit? Hello, I have no food for you. I have nothing for you. I fed you earlier, like a lot. Anyway, plants absorb nitrates, and so, I mean, I figured that it would at least register a little bit of nitrates, but nope. Thanks to all my beautiful plants here, zero, which is like insane. Normally you get rid of water changes with plants. They can delay the number of water changes that you have to do, but you still have to do them, unless, unless they're eating up all the nitrates, I guess, which, my plants are, so I am more than happy with those results. Because my water quality clearly is just fine, I think it was earlier this year when the water was still stabilizing when I was dealing with that leak and when I was having those issues in the pond. My best guess is that that is why I was having issues with water quality and keeping it stable when I had the pumps not running, all that fun stuff. But now that she's better and the water quality's good, that should heal right up and she should be just fine. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this reminds you to check your water quality and I'll see y'all in the next one.